Come on, give God high praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be magnified. Hallelujah. We lift your name, Jesus. We call on your name, Jesus. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Come on, worship us, worship us. Hallelujah. Come on, with your hands lifted. Come on, come on. Come on, while you're clapping your hands, give them something. We call on his great name on today. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus. Whatever you need, hallelujah, it is in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, victory is in the name of Jesus. Joy is in the name of Jesus. Peace is in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Open up your mouth and call his name Jesus. Come on, come on, Jesus. We call on that name on today. Hallelujah. We call on that great name on today. Hallelujah. Whenever we call his name, he comes. Hallelujah. Whenever we offer up a petition before him, he answers our prayers. Hallelujah. He may not come when you want him, but he is always on time. Hallelujah. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. We call on that name on today. Can you just call him right there where you are? Come on. If you're watching at home, call him with your hands lifted, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, right where you are. Create that atmosphere right there in your home. Call the name of Jesus. He is our healer. We call the name of Jesus. He is our protector. Call the name of Jesus. He is our provider. Call the name of Jesus. He is our deliverer. Yo! Yeah. 
what you did last night, no matter what you did yesterday, call his name. Jesus, deliverance, Jesus. I'm tired of living like I've been living, Jesus. Shop. 
place, in this place, in this place, in this place, lift your hands, whatever you need God to do on today, call his name, release. If you call his name, if you call his name, hallelujah, it will go out on assignment. It will go out on assignment. And everything that you have up before the Lord will be released. Let the healing of the Lord be released on today. Let the healing of the Lord be released on today. Let the delivering power of the Lord be released. Release your glory. Release your power. Your power. The power of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. The deliverance of the Lord. Whatever you've been sitting in, I tell you to get up. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of depression. Get up out of depression. Depression has to go. Get up, get up, get up. Get up, get up. Come on, get up, get up, get up. I command my body. I command my mind. I command my mind. I command my mind. Get up, get up, get up. Yeah. 
got to make a stand. So I'm gonna make a stand. So I'm not gonna let the devil keep doing me like this. I'm gonna make a stand. I'm gonna stand bold uh, before the enemy. Uh, and let the devil know uh, that God is on my side. Uh, that God is on my side. Uh, and I'm gonna get up. I'm not gonna stay like this. I'm not gonna be like this. Aren't you tired of the devil bringing the pressure to you? Aren't you tired, amen, of worrying about situations, uh, worrying about circumstances, uh, oppositions all around you? Uh, sometimes you just got to make up in your mind, uh, make a decision, uh, hallelujah. Uh, say, I'm going to get up. I'm going to get up. Hallelujah. 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 I'm just gonna get up out of this. I'm not gonna stay like this. Say the way you see me today, you're not gonna see me that way tomorrow. Because I'm making a rational decision to get up. Pastor Ingrid, you almost messed my message up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just get up. Just get up. Somebody made a decision to get up this morning out of the bed. You got up out of the bed. And you made a decision to come to church today. Hallelujah. And because you're here, God has a word for somebody. Pastor Inger already said for you to get up. Get up out of depression. That suicidal thought. Somebody being troubled on every side. Hallelujah. Say, but I'm not perplexed. Somebody shout glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm not in despair. I'm not forsaken. And I'm not cast down. Somebody shout glory. Because God is on your side. I said God is on your side. He is on your side. I said God is on your side. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of your son Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the prophetic word that has gone forth before you. That has entered into the hearts of this side, your people. And Father, I come now before you, God. Oh, God, as an instrument, a vessel, your ambassador, your messenger, your delegate. Oh, God, I am your delegate. You have delegated me, God. To stand before your people with a right now word. And for that, God, I thank you for finding me trustworthy to stand before you and this thou your people. Oh, Father, I thank you for seeing in me, but I didn't see in myself. For that, God, I thank you. Oh, and I give you e corazza de Dios. I give you all the glory, God. I give you all the praise. Sing your word in this house. Sing your word, God. Drive out distractions. Drive out obstacles. Drive out hindering forces and demonic spirits. Drive it out, God. In the name of Jesus, unstop every deaf ear. Oh, God, open up every heart. To receive of you on today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Almighty God. Drive out evil watch. Evil intent. Wicked work and wicked intent. Everything God that's not of you. Oh Father drive it out. Drive it out. Release your divine restraining order against the assignment of the enemy. 
against every plot, plan, set up, and every trap, every contract. Release your divine restraining order, guess it now. In the name of Jesus. And for that, God, we tell you thank you. And we give you all the glory, God, and praise. And all God's people that believe it, receive it. Decree it and declare it. Open your mouth three times and give God the highest praise. Glory to God. 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 Come on, give it glory. life, amen, head of the church, amen. Thank God for you, God's people, for being here. You may be seated, amen, in the presence of the Almighty God, amen. I honor the Lord for the praise team on today, amen. The musicians, amen, we thank God for you. Thank God for Pastor Ingrid allowing the Lord to use her, amen using her in the prophetic realm. Amen. Amen. The only thing you have to do is just receive. Amen. Just receive of the Lord. Regardless of who it is coming through, just receive it. Because it's a word from the Lord. And God wants us to learn how to tap into the realm of the prophetic. The prophetic into that realm and you can receive of the Lord hallelujah whenever God says something we need to receive it regardless amen of what it looked like or it seemed like even what it is but if God said it you got to receive it hallelujah hallelujah and we bless the Lord thank God for my beloved husband Elder Bradley our mothers, our deacons, ministers of the gospel, each of you that are in the presence of the Almighty God, you are God's people. Amen. We are His people. Amen. And I thank God, amen, for the presence of the Lord. Amen. Get your Bibles. Turn with us to the book of Genesis. Amen, Genesis. Amen, if you have your Bible, if you have it on your phone. Amen. Your tablet, whatever. Amen. I like for people to follow me in the scripture. Amen. Because you might just forget what I'm saying or what I've said. But if you have seen it in the Bible yourself, your eyes have behold the word of the Lord. You're going to remember the word. And you can go back to it. Amen. And get new revelation. Fresh knowledge. Amen. Glory to God. Genesis, the 18th chapter. And God wants you to really hear this word today. He wants you to receive it. Amen. Because some of you are faced with some difficulties. You got some things going on in your life that you've been trying to work out. You've been trying to fix. But to no avail. And God has a word for you on today. Hallelujah. As he said... To Abraham, the 14th verse. Hallelujah. Genesis 18 and verse 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? 
subject being, there is nothing too hard for God. There is nothing too hard for God. Somebody shout glory. I'm not going to talk too much about the story of Abraham and Sarah because I firmly believe that you have heard the story or you have read the story. Amen. Somebody shout glory. But just to let you know a little something, amen, glory to God. It was promised to Sarah and Abraham that God was going to give them a son. Before that, he told Abraham when he called him out, from his family, amen, glory to God. He told him, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Amen. As the grain, grain on the ground, is, uh, the grain of sand is on the seashore, so shall your seed be. As the stars in the heaven, so shall thy seed be. But Abraham had no child. Hallelujah. But here God has given him a promise. God has promised us victory, blessings. He has promised us so many things. There is nothing too hard for God. No matter what it looked like, no matter how long it takes, there's nothing too hard for God. But the devil wants you to think because you haven't received it yet that it's not going to get done. But I want you to know there is nothing too hard for God. Nothing. Somebody say nothing. So Abraham and Sarah, amen, you know the story, amen, glory to God, how she laughed when the angel told them that, amen, what was going to take place, that she was going to have a son, amen, glory to God. She left. She said, I'm old. My husband's old. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God. Hallelujah. When you are 90 and 100, amen, glory to God, that's old. So they begin to say, we're too old. It's not going to happen. I'm paraphrasing. Hey Amen. How can I, I have a child? I passed the, the time of life. Hallelujah. There's nothing too hard for God. Nothing too hard for God. So you know the story how Sarah tried to help God out. Isn't that just like us? When God tells us he's going to do something. If he doesn't do it right, then we try to help him out. And when you try to help God out, you get into trouble. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. So she said, here's my, 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 my maiden. Hey, she's young and she's still fruitful. And amen. Glory to God. Amen. Which you just kind of just, you know, come on. And Abraham did what Sarah asked him. Men don't be weak like that. Somebody shot glory. glory. Hallelujah. She thought that, amen, God was going to make Abraham a father of men and nation through Hagar. Hallelujah. Hagar did. Bring forth a son. But it wasn't the promise. You may produce, but is it the promise? Is it what God promised you? You may go out and try to help God out and get stuff on your own and do what you want to do, but is it the promise? There is nothing too hard for God. Nothing. Somebody shout glory. You know how it is, amen, after he got, amen, born Ishmael. Sarah got jealous of man. What you allow will make you mad. It will make you mad. 
She allowed that to take place. But jealousy and envy came up in her. Hallelujah. Because she was still buried. Somebody shot glory. They didn't have any children. Sarah and Abraham didn't have no, not one child. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, she went to Abraham and said, hey, you got to get rid of this woman. You got to get rid of this woman. Hallelujah. Abraham still leaving up to Sarah. Do what you need to do. And she had to leave camp. Hallelujah. You know the story. But God still preserved Ishmael. Even when they were at the point of about to die. They were about to die. There was no water. And God began to show Haggai, amen, a little stream with some water coming up from the ground. Amen. The reason he preserved uh, Ishmael because that was Abraham's seed. But that wasn't a promise. God will preserve you when you make a mistake. Hallelujah. Because he's still trying to bring forth his promise. That's why God is preserving those that are not saved. Because God has a promise. Hallelujah. There is a purpose and a plan that God has for your life. Hallelujah. Your grandmama, your great grandmama, whomever has prayed for you, they may be going on to be with the Lord, but they pray for you. Say, Lord, save my seed, save my offspring. Somebody shout glory. And that is why the devil cannot destroy you. He may try you and tempt you, amen, and amen, you may be in battle with the enemy, amen, but the devil cannot win because of the promise. Somebody prayed for you and is praying for you. Somebody shout glory. Tell your neighbor that there's nothing too hard for God. And you know the story, amen, glory to God, amen. After Sarah, eight man realized this is not going to work with Haggai. Now she could have gotten another maiden and say, but she's no, I got to do this myself. I'm old, past the time of life, but God, you said it. God, you said it. Abraham, old, but God, you said it. You may not see it in a way, but God, you said it. When you stand on the word of God, no one has to prophesy to you and tell you what thus says the Lord. But when you read the word of God, there's nothing but promises in the word of God. God said, I will do this. I will do that. I will. I will. I will. Nothing but promises. And God is fulfilling his promises. Hallelujah. He promised us a savior. We have a savior. Hallelujah, now that we're saved, he promised us benefits. He said, I daily loaded you with benefits. Hallelujah. There's nothing too hard for God. So therefore, Sarah and Abraham, they had a child. Amen. Isaac, hallelujah. Isaac is the promised child. Amen. Ishmael was the child of a bondswoman. But righteousness came through Abraham. And because Abraham believed God, it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Somebody shot glory. Grace wasn't back there then like it is now. Amen. Grace was the word back then speaking into the hearts of the people. But now we have grace through the blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody shot glory to God. Hallelujah. There is nothing too hard for God. 
I want to go to several scriptures here. Amen. I just want to let you know a little bit about Abraham. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because see, the question was that, is there anything to offer God? But God told me to tell you there's nothing too hard for him. There's nothing. I don't know what you are facing, what you're going through. But God told me to tell you there's nothing too hard for him to work out. There's nothing too hard for him to fix. There's nothing too hard for him to turn around. There's nothing too hard for him to do for you. But then you got to do something. You got to do something. You got to do something. I want you to turn with me, amen, glory to God, to, to uh, First John. Let's go to, I think I want to go to First John, amen. Let's go to First John, amen. First John, the, uh, let's say the uh, third chapter, third chapter of First John. I'm going to take my time, amen. Hallelujah. Because, see, there are things that we got to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Because there's nothing too hard for God. But there are reasons why, amen, you're not getting what God has promised you. Hallelujah. But it's nothing too hard for God to do. But God is waiting on you to do something. It says, amen, 1 John 3 and 22. It says, and whatsoever... Somebody say, whatsoever. We shall ask. And we ask. Whatsoever we ask. Come on, say, whatsoever we ask. We receive of him. So why aren't you asking God to work it out? Why are you keep trying to work it out yourself? You got to put it in God's hand and leave it there. And whenever you put it in God's hand, the devil will try to make you think that God is not doing anything for you. God is moving too slow. Somebody shout glory. Sometimes God, amen, glory to God. Amen, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. But sometimes God is trying to get you in a place in him to serve him. Because if God bring you out and bless you like he promised to bless you, you won't serve him. So God got to get your state of mind. Get your mind, your mind. Settle in him. Hallelujah. Your mentality has to change. You just don't want the blessing of God and you don't want to serve the one that's blessing you. Why? Well, won't you go keep on serving the devil then if you, if, if, if you want blessing? I would, I would rather, amen, serve the one that's blessing me. But you will get God's blessing and still serve the devil. am I talking to? But there's nothing too hard for God. But why not serve God? If God is good to you like that, amen, bring you out of trouble, amen. No, you thought you got yourself out. No, it was God. If it left up to God, you would be in prison. Amen. Glory to God. Still locked up. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You'd be on lost your mind because you did drugs. Amen. Glory to God. You'd been on got killed and shot because you was in the wrong place. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You would be in a state of disaster. Amen. Destruction. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And more difficulty will be upon you than what is. If it had not been for the Lord on your side. Glory to God. So what I'm saying, hallelujah, God bless you even while you're a sinner. You know why God bless you? Because he's trying to prove his love to you. And you're still rejecting him. No matter how many times God worked the things out for you and bring you out of situations, you still won't serve him. You won't serve him. Why? Why not serve God? It was God that brought you out. It is God that's keeping you even right now. It is God that, mm. hallelujah, if God is good to you and you're a sinner, why not serve him and get all the goods? If God can do that for you and you're not even serving him, guess what if you serve him? Can you imagine? He will daily load you with benefits, with blessings. 
Yes, you may go through, but guess what? God will bring you out like that. And the reason he allow you to go through, because why? He is trying to give you a testimony. He giving you some experience. Hallelujah. So you can continue to trust him. Isn't that how you do your children, your child or whatever? You don't give them just everything all at one time. You're going to spoil them. You give them a little bit, a little bit, and let them come and ask you. So they can learn to respect your authority of no and yes. A yes and no. Somebody shout glory to God. Hallelujah. If you give your child everything, amen, glory to God, in the minute you tell him or her no, they're going to kick down your door, throw stuff, knock stuff off the countertop. They're going to go crazy. Because they never heard you tell them no. Oh, wait, not yet. To God, he doesn't want you throwing temper tantrums. Something he wants you just to trust him for. Amen. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Why? Because we keep his commandment. There's a condition. You got to keep the commandments of God. Because there's nothing too hard for God. Hallelujah. There's nothing too hard for God. But you got to keep his commandment. What he's saying, stop sinning. I'm talking about willfully sinning. He will cleanse you from secret faults and errors. But you don't got to keep you from presumptuous sin. You don't want to keep this sinning. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. I know what the Bible said, amen. Now, if any man sin, he have an advocate with the Father. That's if. That's a big if. You make that I as big as you can get it, and that F as big as you can get it. If any man sin, he has an advocate with the Father. What Jesus is saying is once you come to him, amen, he knows that we are not perfect. I'm not giving you a way out to sin, but he knows that we are not perfect. So that's why I say if any man sin. He has an advocate with the Father. Hallelujah. You have an advocate with the Father. Why? Because Jesus Christ is on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. In, oh, glory. Making intercession for you. Pleading your case. That's why he said, come boldly before the throne of grace. That ye might attain mercy. Hallelujah. And find grace to help you in the time of need. Grace will be there for you. But you can't keep playing with God like that. Because the enemy will sneak up on you and cut you off. And in hell, you're going to lift up your eyes, being in torment and fire and flame. Somebody shout glory to God. So because you keep his commandment and do those things. Listen, 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 listen. You got to keep his commandment. He said, what is commandment? Whatever the word tell you not to do, that's what you don't do. Whatever the word tell you to do, that's what you do. Amen. But see, the devil don't want you to read the Bible because you know what the devil don't told people? Man wrote the Bible. How I know that's God's word? Well, the devil is talking to you. You recognize him. Why can't you recognize God? Because the devil is going to tell you stuff that's going to kill you. The word of God going to tell you stuff that's going to save you. Hallelujah. The word that we preach is the word of power and salvation. It's the word of deliverance. But the devil wants you to debate the Bible. Because you don't heard somebody told you, amen, amen, this is not, that you, you believe in that Bible? Yes, I believe in it. I'm going to believe in it until the rapture take place. Hallelujah. Until I die, I'll go with the rapture, whichever come first. I'm going to believe the word, read the word, and stand on the word. The Bible says, holy men of God was moved by the Spirit of God, and they wrote. Hallelujah. You rather believe them witchcraft books y'all buying? Y'all go to these little stores buying witchcraft stuff. 
from trying to hurt folks and do whatever you're doing. You can't get your lover back. You better pray and ask God to put you together and keep you together. You can't work no witch trap trying to make somebody love you, do for you. Let that man keep some of his own money. What can witchcraft? I, he don't give me that money. He don't give me that money. But you believe those books you read. Believe the Bible. The red, unadulterated word of God. And stand on it. There is nothing too hard for God. Nothing. Glory to God. But you got to keep his commandments. You got to do those things that are pleasing in the sight of God. What are you doing? Have you ever asked yourself, Lord, am I pleasing to you? Am I doing the things that please you, God? When you wake up in the morning and pray, you ought to ask God, God, this day I want to do what please you. But you don't pray that kind of prayer. You just want God, God, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And you still living a raggedy life. You say, Lord, I want to please you. I want to do what pleases you, God. Not what pleases my flesh. But I want to please you, God, in everything. Not only what I do, but what I say. Where I go. I know it seems like I'm screaming at you. Hallelujah. Because I want you to get this. Because there's nothing too hard for God. But you got to do something. You got to ask him. Keep his commandment and please him. So don't get envious and jealous when you see people being blessed. Now, there are some people being blessed and they sinners. It's because of the grace and the mercy of God. So don't think because you're blessed or that, oh, you are the righteousness of God. There are sinners being blessed. Somebody shout glory. Some people just very intelligent like that. They know how to make money and make money work for them. Somebody shout glory. I didn't know how to work and make money and make money work. So it's nothing to do with their righteousness. Because guess what? All of our righteousness is as filthy rags before the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't say, well, I know they say because I tell you, they bless. There's a lot of millionaire billionaires that bless and they worship the devil. They mean as a rattlesnake. They're hateful. Somebody shout glory to God. We want to be blessed with the righteousness of God. We want God's blessing to be upon us so we can give him all the glory for what he has done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because when I was a sinner, I was blessed. When I was a sinner, I was blessed. I had money. I didn't do right with it, but I had it. Amen. I had money, but I was a sinner. Glory to God. And I wasn't doing the right things with the money. I was buying booze and, amen, cigarettes and different stuff. and just partying and buying outfits to go out to party. Didn't have no church clothes because I didn't go to church. Amen. I had one or two little outfits that, that you could say you call it church clothes. But now people don't have church clothes. Every day is church. Everything you wear is church clothes now. But back then, there were certain clothes you just wore to church. <laughs> you call it church clothes. Am I right about it? But now, what you wear every day is your church clothes now. So, amen, this is a different time. Isn't that right? But back then, amen, you had church clothes. I had just a few. I had just a few, amen. But I had all these outfits and stuff. My tight jeans, my tight whatever, and my little sporty hats. I wore hats back then, but now I wear them with my thing. Amen, get over the Amen. With my little cigarette between my lips. Amen. I thought I was cool, mama. I'm telling you, amen. Glory to God. I went out looking sharp for the devil. I was sharp as a tack. Amen. One my stack kids, you know them, them, them stacks they had back then. They call them stacks. I want my stacks. Amen. My little tight stuff. I wasn't big as nothing. And I just go, amen, glory to God. I mean, I walked in the place. Everybody stood back and looked. I was decked out. I was decked out. I went in there looking bad. I looked tough. 
I was little, but I looked tough. Somebody shot glory to God. I was blessed back then. God kept me back then. But look how he's keeping me now. I think I look pretty good. I think I look pretty good. Somebody shot glory. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. What were we talking about? There's nothing too hard for God. Nothing too hard for God. But we got to do the things that's pleasing in his sight. Turn with me, amen. Glory to God to John, the fifth chapter, first John. Amen. I know I'm a little long today, amen. But see, y'all then, y'all then, we ain't have service Friday night, and y'all didn't go with us to Rinkin. And amen. Glory to God. So I got to make up for Friday and yesterday. <laughs> amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, bless the name of the Lord. First John, the fifth chapter, amen, glory to God. Amen. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. Amen. This is the confidence. This is our, our assurance, amen, glory to God, that we have in him, that if we act anything according to his will, he hears us. There's nothing too hard for God. But you got to ask him. You got to have confidence and assurance. Like I preached last Sunday, amen, gave me a message. Amen, praying with expectation. You got to expect God to do it. You got to look for him to do it. You got to have assurance and confidence that when you ask God for something, he will do it. There is nothing too hard for God. No matter what it looked like, what it seemed like, it is not too hard for God. But you got to do that which is pleasing in the sight of God. Keep his commandments. There's nothing too hard for God. I said, there's nothing too hard for God. Amen. Glory to God. And if we know that he hears us, God always hears us. God told me, amen, last year, the end of December, he said, I've heard your prayer. And I've answered him. I think I told you all that. And he told me, amen, he said, every prayer that you pray, I hear and I answer. And that's why now I tell folks, amen, call me for prayer. Call me. Because God hear my prayer. Just call me for prayer. Call me for prayer. Because God hear and answer my prayer. You just got to believe. Don't doubt. Amen. And live a life that pleasing in the sight of God and keep his commandment. Because God hears my prayer and he answers my prayer. So call me anytime. And if you don't get it, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, got, it ain't got nothing to do with me and God is you. Amen. Somebody shout glory to God. Because he told me he hears and answers my prayer. And that, that's, I tell you, God gave me the, the reassurance. Amen. Just keep on praying. He said, I made you a weapon of war against the enemy through your prayer life. Through my prayer life, he has given, oh, glory to God. He's given me weapons. He made me a weapon of war. I said, yeah, see, y'all, y'all, y'all missing it. And he can do the same for you. See, I'm always seeking God for new revelation. I'm always seeking God, God, what's the next phase? What's the next journey? Somebody shout glory to God. He just pray. Just pray. Just pray. Glory to God. He said, I hear and I will answer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So if we know that he hears us. Whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. Amen. He hears us. And if we know that he hears us, you got to know that God is hearing you. You got to pray with expectation. Looking for results. Amen. Hallelujah. See, if you're praying and you're not looking for results, amen, you might as well not even pray. You're wasting God's time and your own time. Somebody shout glory to God. So you know that he hears us. Amen. What's up? We ask. We know that we have the petition that we desire of him. He said, delight yourself in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. Oh, I'm talking to us on today. I'm talking to us on today. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God. I want you to turn to James. Amen. Go to James. Amen. Amen. The book of James. The fourth chapter of James. Amen. I want us to note, amen, glory to God. I'm going to read this from a good news version, amen, as well. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. Verse 2 and 3. 
Amen. It's James 4. Amen. Here's some pages turning. Amen. When you get it, shout amen. Amen. Sound like everybody got it. Amen. Amen. Verse 2, amen. Amen. And, and uh, 3, we're going to read those two verses. Say, you want things. Let me read it from the King James first. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have. And, and cannot attain. Ye fight and war. Yet ye have not. Because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Amen. Amen. The good news virgin said, you want things. I want y'all to get this. When I read it in here, I said, I got to read this, this version. I want you to hear me. Amen. I want y'all to stop. Just, just, just listen. Pay attention. You want things, things, but you cannot have them. You want things, but you cannot have them. So you are ready to kill. You're ready to take it. Whatever costs necessary, I'm going to have this. I'm going to get it. How many know God will allow you to get things because you believe him for it? But guess what? It's not in his perfect will. We were read, amen, in the scripture before. Amen, according to his will. Something we ask God for is not according to his will. Amen. But guess what? Because you believe God, your faith caused God to act on your behalf. But guess what? What he allowed you to get, because it wasn't in his a perfect will, you're going to suffer with it. The only reason God gave it to you, because you believed him for it. He cannot ignore faith. Faith moves God. Cause God to act on your behalf. But you got to make sure it is the perfect will of God. Because sometimes God be telling you to wait. Not yet. And sometimes he might tell you never. This is not for you. But you're going, oh God, I want it. And that's why you have been trouble with it. And don't look at your wife now. Or your husband. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God. Hallelujah. But it says, amen. Glory to God. You just go and amen and take it. Amen. Come back here now. Come back. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But you cannot have them, so you are ready to kill. You strongly desire things. Strongly desire, desires things. God wants us to desire things. Amen? Hear me now. He wants us to desire things. But it says that you strongly, you, I mean, you just got to have it. Hallelujah. Desire things, but you cannot get them. So you quarrel and fight. Hallelujah. You quarrel and fight. How many husband, wives, and and things you, you quarrel and fight because one want one thing and the other want something else. Amen. And really, God is not in his will for neither one of you to have what you're asking for right now. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. That's why you got to spend time with God and seeking God's face. Amen. Stop making all these boo-boos and mistakes. Amen. If you seek the face of God, you won't be running to these brick walls like that. You won't be quarreling and arguing about something. God is a God of peace, not confusion. Hallelujah. But this is what I want. No, that's what I want. Have we, no, y'all need to just put it aside and come to an agreement on something that God says you can have. Hallelujah. So you do not have what you want because you do not ask God for it. Hallelujah. The reason you don't have what you want because you do not ask God for it. If you ask God for it, according to his will, hey man, glory to God, guess what? There's nothing too hard for God. Hallelujah. Sometimes you have to ask God for this simple stuff that you think that, hey man, well, I ain't going to ask God for that because this is, ask God for everything. Amen. 
as hard as it may seem, as simple as it may, as it may seem. Ask God for it. Always talk to God before you make a decision. Amen. Before you make any decision concerning your life, concerning your welfare, your family, ask God. People don't talk to God like that. People just don't talk to God like that. They only talk to God, amen, when something just gotten out of control. They didn't want to talk to God. Same thing when they come to me for prayer. When the devil don't beat you up and got you all bruised up and, and everything, and you don't got yourself in deeper trouble, amen, glory to God, trying to figure God out, trying to work things out yourself, you don't got in uh, uh, deeper trouble, now you want to come to me to pray you out. First of all, I'm going to ask you how you got there. Amen. What, what happened? How did you get like this? What happened? Then I got to go back from the drawing board and start praying for the first thing that you were you boo-booed at. Amen. Then you're going to come to the thing that you really want God to do. But first we got to straighten out all these boo-boos. Amen. Somebody shout glory. Amen. God ain't going to bless you with that and then you're going to still be making boo-boos. Amen. Somebody shout glory to God. And when you ask, you do not receive it. Why? A lot of people ask, but they're not receiving. Amen. You got to ask with and pray with expectation, knowing that there's nothing. This is a continuation from last Sunday, anyway. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody shout glory to God. Amen. You ask for things. Amen. Let me go back up. Amen. And when you ask, you do not receive it because your motive, oh, glory to God, your motive, uh, motives, let me put an S on it, are bad. you asking God with the wrong motive. Amen. you asking God for something you want to show everybody else. you asking God because you just want to try to prove something to folks. You asking God for things, amen, because you just want to, amen, look like you're big and bad and all this stuff. Amen. You want to ask, amen, you asking God just to prove to your spouse. See, God heard me, he didn't hear you. Now you got your shoulders all up. Somebody shout glory to God. Don't ask God for stuff with the wrong motive. Somebody shout glory to God. Turn to your neighbor and say, let your motive be right. Somebody shout glory to God. Hallelujah. Because you're not going to receive of the Lord if you are asking God with the wrong motive. Amen. Hallelujah. You ask for things to use for your own pleasure. You ask for things that you want to just do for your own pleasure. You ever seen God get God bless folks with, with a whole bunch of stuff and they don't want to help nobody? They look down on you. But when they broke, they're talking about everybody that rich. Yeah, look at them. They, you know, they, they just doing this, doing this. They go, you know, they got the money. They just doing this. You talking about when you get money, you, you worse than them. I don't know why folks buying this because they got money. I don't know why folks doing this. But they, 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 that's what they want. They got the money to do it. They can do it. To stop talking about folks that, that's wealthy and got money and got nice homes and cars and, and whatever they want to get and do. Amen. Glory to God. Because when you get money, you're going to be worse than them. Can't nobody tell you nothing. They can't even touch you with a telegram pole. Somebody shout glory to God. Hallelujah. You're going to think you high and mighty. That's why God let some people say at a level. That's why God has keep some people at a level. Because you ain't ready for the next level. You're not ready for wealth. Hallelujah. Some of you may get an inheritance. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody may leave you some money. And you, it's going to blow your little mind. Hallelujah. You buying everybody a car. And y'all see it renting. Yep, yep, somebody didn't get that. You want to buy everybody a car in your family, and you still paying rent. 
The first thing you should do, give your tithes and pay for your roof over your head. Hallelujah. And pay for it in full. Because you have the money to do it with. But you're ready to say, well, I'm going to pay a down payment. No! And now you don't did that and find everybody caught now the money gone and you, you, you whatever you bought now everybody about to get repo. What you should have done was pay for your roof over your head. Pay for it in full. Got to get paid in full. You got the money. Don't go fludging like that. Because them say money come, money go. Rich today, broke tomorrow. You ever known people to get a whole bunch of money and within a few months they broke? Huh? And you see it raining? Ain't nothing wrong with rent now. Don't, don't y'all get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with renting something. Please. I'm talking about people that are getting a whole bunch of money. See, God promised you that you're going to come. You're going to come. I'm talking about people that get a big lump sum of money, can come out of debt, can, can just be successful. Is it wise to get a whole bunch of money and you're going to still be paying rent on something? First thing you do, get you a nice crib. <laughs> well, that's what we used to call it back in the day, crib. What y'all call it now? Oh, it's a crib seal. Okay, get you a nice crib. Amen. And you're going to pay for it in full. You're going to get the car that you want, pay for it in full. Don't owe nobody. Live a debt-free life. Isn't that right? All right. There's nothing too hard for God. Nothing too hard for God. Amen. Turn with me, amen. I'm about, I'm about finished. See, this is a continuation from last Sunday. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Some of y'all get lunch, but stop. Just, just, Ask God to stop that stomach from growling. Amen. If you ask him, he'll stop it. Amen. Turn with me to Luke 18. Let's go to Luke 18. Amen. See, if y'all come to Bible study, I won't have to be so long like this. But y'all don't come to Bible study, and y'all be missing all the goodies. Mm-hmm. Yes, y'all do. Amen. Bible said it'd be good. We teach on a series about the Holy Ghost. We're almost finished with that series. Some of y'all need to have been in Bible study so you can understand the Holy Spirit. Isn't that right? Amen. The Bible said, amen, he spake a parable unto them, uh, Luke 18, amen, to the end, this end, that men are always to pray and not to faint. Amen. Amen. Don't faint. There's nothing to offer God. Stop worrying about stuff. Amen. There's nothing too hard for God. Amen. Glory to God. The 27th verse says in that same chapter, amen, and he said, amen, glory to God, take um, uh, uh, the things which are impossible with man, amen, are possible with God. The things that are impossible with men, amen, it may seem impossible to you, but with God it is possible. It is possible. Don't let nobody tell you, amen, that's impossible. God got a way, amen, glory to God, that you don't even know of, amen. You may go to one place, amen, glory to God, to get alone, amen. That place may turn you down, but guess what? God will send you someplace else, and they will give you that loan with less interest. There's nothing impossible. Your credit score may be, oh God, at the bottom. Hallelujah. And people tell you, God, ain't nobody going to give you no long time. Your credit is, mm. No one's going to give you nothing. I don't even know how you got that hoop that you got. 
Nobody going to give you nothing. Somebody shout glory to God. But the favor of God will be on your life. If you pray and ask God, listen, if you pray and ask God, God will lead you to the right dealership. Somebody shout glory to God. How you were, you were trying to get another little hoop to something, a better hoop than what you have. Hallelujah. But you go to the right dealership after you have prayed. God will tell you where to go. And guess what? The right salesman will come out there. God will send an angel. An angel will come to you. Amen. Ask you, say, what car you want? You say, well, I'm looking at but Did you see this over here? This 2024? The first thing you say to yourself, I can't afford that. My credit back. No. You say, yeah, I see it. Say, do you want that? Yeah, I want it. You, you like it? Want a test drive? Come on, let's test drive. Yeah, I like it. Come in my office. Hallelujah. Sometimes you talk too much. That man didn't ask you nothing about your credit score. He didn't ask you nothing about your finances. Somebody shot glory. He didn't ask you nothing about, hey amen, where you were. He didn't ask you nothing. It was an angel sent by God. There's nothing too hard for God. You get in there, amen. He just go to right, amen. That's for your driver license, proof of insurance and stuff. Thank God you got some liability on that hoop deal. So, hey amen. You got some insurance. You know what I'm saying. Hey amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And they just, they just stop writing in there. And you sitting there and all like, keep your mouth shut, though. You said, but don't let that come out. Just let that man do what he is doing, that woman, whomever, because that is an angel from God. There's nothing too hard for God. And you sitting there like, you know, just, just in your spirit, just, just, just thanking God, thanking God. He said, just sign right here, and this is your monthly payment to be such, 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 and that, 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 and give you the keys, and you drive off. Nothing too hard for God. That's why you got to pray and ask God. When you go looking for a home, amen. You trying to purchase a home, amen. Some property, whatever. Pray and ask God. Somebody else may get it, but guess what? If it belongs to you, God will let them sell it and get rid of it, and it'll come back to you anyhow. Isn't that right? God has a way, amen. There's nothing too hard for God. And guess what? When you get it, it'll be affordable to you. Affordable. You get a 2024, amen, with your payment, not even $400. Somebody shout glory to God. Most cars are, what, $1,300, $1,900 or something. But here's the favor of God. God had an angel there. And you know why it's an angel? Because once the owner of the dealership, amen, went through the paperwork, they said, how did this person get this car? But they can't come take it back because you got it now. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the one that did the paperwork, they no longer work there. They quit the next day. Come on, somebody. There's nothing too hard for God. Nothing too hard for God. I'm telling you, there's nothing too hard for God. If you pray and ask God, amen, and go on the leading of the Holy Spirit, that way you should be in Bible study. Amen, glory to God. And go by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something, God will operate for you in the supernatural. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. There's nothing, 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 nothing. Glory to God. Mark 11 and 22. I'm almost finished, y'all. I know we got a baptism. Amen. Amen. Y'all candidates, y'all, y'all ready? Y'all see y'all getting this word right now. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Mark 11. Amen. Glory to God. 11 and 22. Y'all know that by heart. We quote it all the time. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. That latter part. Have faith in God. That's all you got to do is have faith in God. Hallelujah. And you know the rest of the story. You can read 23 and 24 and, and the rest of it yourself. Amen. But have faith in God. Somebody said, just have faith in God. 
Just have faith. Amen. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mark 9 and uh, 9 and 23. Amen. Glory to God. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, see what I'm saying? You got to believe. All things are possible to him that believe or believe it. Amen. All things are possible. There is, I, I don't know what, yeah, somebody going through some stuff. Somebody faced with some situation difficulties. And you need God to work it out. Just have faith. Just believe. Believe and do the other thing. Make sure you're pleasing God. Keep his commandment. Do all of that. And if you haven't been pleasing God, ask God right now. Say, God, forgive me for where I messed up. Forgive me, God, for when I didn't believe you. Move all doubt. Hallelujah. Help me to keep your commandments. And God will start right now working a miracle for you. But you can't be so stark hearted that you don't see where you messed up and where you're wrong at. He said, a broken and a contract spirit, God will never despise. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God. Oh, bless the Lord. Amen. Just believe. Amen. Glory to God. Let's go to Matthew. I've got, got two more scriptures. I'm, I'm going through them real, very quick. Amen. I think I've given you enough to know that there's nothing too hard for God. Amen. If you don't have it by now, you're just not going to get it. Amen. Amen. I can't spend all day trying to tell you one thing. Somebody shout glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew, amen, uh, 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 the 17th chapter. Amen. Glory to God. And begin at the 20th verse. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. They want to know why could not we cast out this, this, this spirit out of this boy? Why can we cast him out? Hallelujah. The man brought unto the disciples, they could not cast him out. Amen. So then Jesus, amen, had to, amen, glory to God, cast the spirit out. And then they went to Jesus privately saying, amen, glory to God, amen, why could not we cast this demon out? He said, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, amen, remove hence, amen, to yonder place, and it shall, amen, it shall, amen, remove, amen, be removed, amen. It shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you if you just have faith. That's why when I pray, I have faith. When I'm praying for you, I'm believing God for you. Amen. I'm believing God along with you. Hopefully, you believe it too. Amen. When I pray for myself, amen, I'm believing God for whatever I'm asking him. When I go to the hospital anywhere, I'm believing God. Whatever words come up out of my mouth in prayer, I believe God for it. Hallelujah. And even if it doesn't come right then, I know it is on the way. Hallelujah. Somebody say, it's on the way. Tell your neighbor, he may not come when you want him. But he's an on-time God. Somebody say, he's an on-time God. Saying all things are possible. Say all things are possible. That there's nothing too hard for God. Tell yourself, uh, prophesy to your spirit uh, and say there's nothing uh, too hard for God. Say God is working this out for me. God is giving me victory. Somebody shout glory. And say, how be it? Uh, this kind goes not out, uh, but by prayer and fasting. Uh, Sometimes you got to fast. Uh, you got to pray and seek God's face. Uh, amen. Allow God to move for you. Uh, say, Lord, uh, I need you to move speedily. Because uh, my back is against the wall. Uh, I'm tired of going through this. Uh, I'm tired of being up and down. Uh, Lord, uh, I need you now. Uh, Lord, uh, I refuse. Uh, 
uh, to allow the devil uh, to cause me to doubt. Uh, but I believe you, Lord. Uh, I stand on your word. Uh, I stand on your promises. Uh, no matter uh, what it looked like. Uh, no matter uh, what it seemed like. Uh, cause God, uh, I know uh, that when you promise something, uh, somebody shall glory. Uh, no matter uh, what it is, uh, I tell you now, uh, do not uh, take matters uh, in your own hand. Uh, just stand on uh, the promises of God. Uh, stop trying to work it out. Uh, stop trying to figure it out. Uh, but just stand on uh, the promises of God. Because uh, there's nothing uh, to harbor God. Uh, whatever seen impossible uh, to you, uh, it is not uh, impossible for God. Because uh, all things uh, are possible. Uh, to them that believe it uh, shout yeah uh, shout yeah uh, shout yeah uh, shout yeah uh, tell your neighbor uh, say keep on believing uh, keep on trusting uh, lean not uh, to your own understanding uh, but in all your ways uh, acknowledge God uh, shout yeah uh, yeah uh, yeah uh, of all things uh, Somebody say all things, huh? all things. Huh? Say my son, huh? my daughter, huh? my children, huh? grandchildren. Huh? They will be delivered. Huh? I know huh? they're strung out huh? with addiction, huh? but all things huh? are possible. Huh? There is nothing huh? too hard for God. Huh? You was messed up, huh? but God delivered you. Huh? They messed up, huh? and God will deliver them. Huh? Somebody shall glory. Huh? Don't you doubt, huh? but tell God, huh? I'm standing, huh? I'm standing huh? on your word. Huh? I'm standing uh, on your promises. Uh, Lord, uh, bring it in pass. Uh, bring it in pass. Uh, you said, Lord, uh, you hear us uh, when we pray. Uh, now, Lord, uh, grant our petition. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, shot, yeah. Uh, high five somebody. Uh, say, there is nothing too hard for God. Hallelujah. Everyone standing. Start limiting God. You know, you had to give God something to work with. Give God something to work with. You know what that one thing is? Your faith. That's all. Faith that work is dead. Give God something to work with. When he see your faith, when they were letting the man down that was crippled, they let him down through the roof. Cause they couldn't get through the crowd through the door. Guess what? When Jesus saw them putting that man through the roof, tore the roof off and let the man down. The Bible said when he saw their faith, when he saw their faith, give God something to work with. Give him something to work with. That is your faith. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. There is nothing too hard for God. God will save them. God will deliver them. God will bless them. God will bring you out. It's the will of God that we all be blessed. Hallelujah. Just keep on believing God. Just keep on believing God. One thing I've always had, even when I was a sinner, that was faith. I've always had faith. Even when I was a child growing up, I would always believe God for stuff. I didn't know God like I know him now. But my mama told me, said, God was up there. And the devil down there. I would always look up. And talk to God. I told God, Amen. I said, Lord, help me to pass all my grades because I want to marry Jimmy. 
I was in love with Jimmy. And I told God, because I didn't really like school. I didn't like school. But when he said he wanted to marry me, I knew it was going to take God. I wasn't even saved, but I always have had faith. And I looked up to heaven. I was out in the yard, sweeping in the yard with a yard broom. Y'all, some of y'all know what that is. Yeah, y'all know. These young folks don't know what that is. They don't even know nothing about grass, cut grass. They don't do that. Amen. Tears flowing out of my eyes. I mean, I always pray some serious prayer. I ain't pray, pray no prayer that you don't like something. Like, yeah, God, dear. No, I, 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 I pray crocodile's tears prayers. And I remember looking up to the sky. And I looked up, I said, Lord, help me, Lord, to pass all my grades. Because, Lord, I want to marry Jimmy. That's what I told God. You know, kids, when you're children, you know, you're a young lady, you say some stuff that, you know. Amen. And I want you to know, glory to God. God gave me some, oh God, mm, some knowledge. You talk about intellect. You talk about intellect. Man, I didn't even have to take the yield exam when I was in my senior year. I was exempt from taking the, the senior exam. Cause my score was so high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you people. About two or three of my subjects, I didn't have to take the yearly exam. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. God answered my prayer. Hallelujah. You know what else, Brother Baker? See, we were sharecroppers. Now, I always see these other people in these big houses. The other people. <laughs> Amen. And I said, told the Lord, I want a big house. Amen. I used to love them houses. You know, we used to go there and you know, pick cotton, beans all around that big man house. Amen. Glory to God. But I always said, I want me a big house. Amen. Did it come right then? No. Amen. I was still a child. Amen. But I prayed. And I told God, I said, I want my own home. When I got married, we was renting, living on post. Amen. I said, Lord, I want my own home. I'm tired of paying rent. And, and rent wasn't high, but it was high too, but not like it is now. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, he is Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. And God bless Elder Bretton and I with our first home. But God had showed me the house, but it looked like on the outside and everything. Amen. Had a fence around and all. And the realtor took us around to all these other homes. I said, that ain't it. Said, that ain't that, That's not it. Amen. She's got one more I want to show you. And she got to that. I said, that's it right there. That's it. I didn't even go in the house yet. That's it right there. Amen. So I began to thank God. Elder Brett and I, we praise God. Jesus. We thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. But then that wasn't it either. It was it for then. And then, that's a while I started running out of closet space. You know how we women are. I think, I don't think Brad even had any space in the closet. Amen. I said, Lord, I need me a bigger house. I said, Lord, one thing I want, I want a big walk-in closet. <laughs> Amen. I got tired of, got to pull out this, just get the one pair of shoes. Hallelujah. Get my clothes out from the thing. They were all like this right here. I got re them. Because they don't got wrinkles and beans so jammed together. I said, Lord, I want a 
come with a big walk-in closet. That's what I told God. And I prayed, and I told God, I said, Lord, I said, give me a big house. I want a huge walk-in closet. That's the main thing I focus on, the walk-in closet. Hallelujah. And one day, the Lord spoke to me. He said, I'm going to build your house. He said, if I give God all the glory. When I say God built the house, and I say God built the church, I, I would never take credit for anything concerning this ministry. If you notice, I say, it's God's house. I never say, y'all, my members. I say, you're God's people. I give God all the glory and everything. Because I know it's God. It is God. Hallelujah. And God said he was going to do that. I'm just sharing this. Y'all remain standing now, if you can. Amen. And God said he was going to do it. Amen. So there was somebody came to me and said, you know, uh, you can get a loan. So, so, so. I said, okay. I told you, I said, let's, let's submit. Amen. God said he was going to do it. I stood on the promises. He told Abraham and Sarah, Amen. I'm going to give you a son. I stood on the promises of God. I don't wait. When God tells me something, I stand on it. He said, he's going to build this church. I stood on it. We had a handful of members. I stood on it. I always stand on whatever God says. And you got to understand on what God tells you. Even if God tell me to tell you something, you better stand on it. You may not see it right there, but you stand on it. Don't let the promise leave you. Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. We submitted for the long. They approved us. Amen. They approved us. Amen. So I sold my house that I had to somebody. And I told them, don't you tell nobody. It was somebody in the church. I sold it to them. You can't get up and testify. Don't testify. Not that you got a home. Not yet. Until God complete what he's doing for me. Amen. Many times they want to testify. I, I, I. And they go, ah, ah. And he knew. He knew that not to say it. Amen. Somebody shot glory. It was hard for them to hold it, but they held it. Hallelujah. But I began to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. And they stopped building the house. Had framed it. Stopped framing it. Brother. Got a call. From the owner of the lending company. So I'm sorry to tell you that uh, you're not approved. I'm talking to Ella Brandon. And y'all, if anybody know me outside of church, you know I don't take no stuff. Y'all looking at me crazy. Y'all looking at me crazy. Amen. Business is business. Business is business. I said, business is business. I told little Bradley, give me that phone. Give me the phone. I told him, I said, listen, sir. I say, I have a house already sold. I'm a baby home. I said, we don't have no place to stay. Because you all told us we were approved. So they sold our house. We sold our house. Somebody already bought it. I said, they framing our new house. I said, we don't have no place to go. He said, well, let me get back with you. I started praying. I said, Lord, you got to give us a miracle. You got to give us. Let me tell you something. There's nothing impossible for God. There's nothing too hard for God. See what I'm saying? I wasn't about to lose my blessing. So I pray, Ella Brad, that we came in agreement. I said, babe, come on, we gotta pray. And I want you to know, the man called us back. He said, you know, he said, I'm gonna have the honor. But this, the, the sale, what you call it, the, the agent has done. I'm at the honor of what he has done. Because it wasn't no fault. <laughs> Say it wasn't your fault. Hallelujah. He just so you can continue to build your house. The house is yours. 
Amen. 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 And I want you to know, God blessed us in such a way with a 30-year mortgage. But we paid it off in, what was it, 15 years, Elder Bradley? 14 or 15 years, we paid it off. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is nothing too hard for God. So, I'm saying this. You gotta find somebody. Whatever you have up before God, it doesn't matter what kind of news you get. I'm talking to somebody. I know I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody. No matter how hard it looks, how difficult it may seem, God said it, he's going to do it. If you ask him in faith, believe it, guess what? It's already done. You just don't see it yet. Because the minute you pray and ask God, God began to perform a miracle. He began to work it out. You may not see it, but it's done. It shall and will come to pass. I got so many tests, I can't tell them all. Hallelujah. But God will do just what you say. Amen. Don't let nothing come into your life to clog up your prayer life. To cause your prayers to be hindered. Husband, wife, be in agreement. Be in an agreement. Hallelujah. Don't let nothing clog up your prayer line. For there are blessings he just, he, he's waiting to give you. Hallelujah. Nothing but blessings. Hallelujah. And we bless the Lord. Clap your hands and give God glory. Amen. Nothing too hard for God. I just want to pray a general prayer. Hallelujah. As Pastor Ingram was going forth, amen. I was really praying with her. Lord, let the people receive this. What she was saying. I said, Lord, let the people receive it. Amen. So God has already done some great things for you. But I want to pray a general prayer at this time. I want you to look to the Lord. Almighty God. You have given your word to this side of your people. And Lord, we just ask you now, God, that. That the people receive all of it. Not some of it, but all of it. That they receive of you, God. That situations will change. Lives will change. Problems solved and worked out. Things are being turned around. Lord, I don't know what these people are going through, but you do. Oh, you sit high and you look low. You know I down sitting and you know I'm uprising. And Lord, I ask you now, God, to touch each one that's under the sound of my voice. God, you touch him. Touch him, God. Touch God. Right now. God, we ask for forgiveness. You that need forgiveness, come on, just ask it right now. Ask God to forgive you. Ask him to come into your heart, into your life. Ask God to be your Lord and your Savior. Say, dear Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Forgive me, Lord, for everything that I've done wrong, that I've said wrong, that I've acted or behaved. Forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me, God, from every shortcoming. Cleanse my spirit. Cleanse my mind, God. 
Create in me, God, a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in me. And Lord, I thank you. And I accept you, Lord, into my heart, into my life as my Lord and my Savior. And Lord, I thank you now. I thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering prayer. Thank you, Lord, for healing and deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for moving pain, aches, and misery feeling. Thank you, Lord, God, for driving out every spirit of infirmity. In the name of Jesus, every vice and addiction. Thank you, Lord, for total, complete deliverance of that boy, that girl, that man, that woman. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you now. And we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' precious name. Somebody shout amen. Come on, shout amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to see our offering this time. Amen. God loves a cheerful, willing giver. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do I have to take it off for myself? Y'all moving kind of slow? Hallelujah. In the hand of the finance committee.